blow fly strike in sheep has been known to occur for several centuries. Even in the far off days of 1550, it was recognized that moisture played an important part in rendering a sheep susceptible to fly strike and struck areas were crudely dressed to dry them out. Tusser, in his treatise, A Hundred Good Points of Husbandry, recommends this crude treatment as a routine practice. For many years, very little thought was given to combating the blowfly pest because the seriousness of fly strike had not manifested itself to any great extent. However, from 1900 onwards, the seriousness of the position gradually became more apparent. Flock masters began to realize that they were faced with heavy losses as fly wave after fly wave occurred over increasingly widespread areas. The control of blowfly strike in sheep imposes a heavy burden on sheepmen. And many thousands of sheep die each year as a result of fly strike. The wool yield of many thousands more is greatly reduced and many fleeces are ruined Blowflies are thus directly responsible for the loss of many millions of pounds of wool to the industry. The health of the sheep is affected by fly worry and blood poisoning often results. The work involved in the control of blowfly strike calls for constant vigilance. It calls for periodical mustering. It calls for crutching. It calls for jetting. And affected sheep must be treated. The annual cost of the work involved in control and the direct losses caused by blowflies amounts to a colossal sum of money. In addition to damage to fleeces, there are several other indirect losses from blowfly strike. For example, there is a lowering of fertility in affected sheep and lambing percentages suffer in consequence. Crutch-struck ewes are often too sick to suckle their lambs. Mustering tallies are short due to struck sheep being missed and left in the paddock. The green blowfly is responsible for up to 90% of all strikes in sheep. Its hairless maggots are frequently the only ones present in a strike wound. The green blowfly breeds almost entirely on the living sheep. There are four stages in its life cycle. The adult blowfly, the egg, the maggot, and the pupa. Green blowflies attack the living sheep and egg masses are laid on moist, susceptible areas of the fleece. After 24 hours, eggs hatch and young maggots emerge. They commence to feed, using their powerful mouth hooks to scratch and tear into the skin of the sheep. In two or three days, the maggots are fully grown. They drop off the sheep and crawl into cracks in the ground or under debris. Here they change into a resting stage known as pupae. After some days, the young blowfly emerges from its pupa case. 
The young blowflies are able to force their way up through the earth or out from under debris by means of the bladder-like sacs on their heads. Once in the open, the sacs disappear and the life cycle is soon completed. Several other flies also attack sheep, but are of lesser importance than the green blowfly. Here are the two common brown blowflies, frequently seen in the house. Their maggots are hairless, like those of the green blowfly. Although they do attack the living sheep, particularly in the cooler climate, they live mainly on carrion. Here is the blue-green blowfly, which is found in the hotter climates. It causes secondary strike by attacking sheep after other flies have established a primary wound. Its maggots are hairy, in contrast to those of the green and brown blowflies. Hairy maggots repel and even devour other maggots. Secondary strike by the blue-green blowfly is usually of extreme severity, and if not treated, the affected sheep may die. The black bush fly causes irritation to wounds and keeps them open to attack by other flies. Blowflies breed rapidly in warm weather, and their power to reproduce is immense. These two green blowflies are the parents of these 2,216 sons and daughters, all of which were produced in 77 days. Sheep are not fly-struck by chance. First of all, blowflies must be active, and areas on a sheep's fleece must be attractive to them. The main attraction is moisture, particularly when a soiled area of the fleece is involved. It must stay moist for 48 hours for the young maggots to hatch and establish themselves. One of the main factors in keeping woolen skin moist is the length of the wool. Note how moisture is retained under the wool. It is this moisture that makes the area susceptible to strike. The length of the tail of a sheep also has a very definite bearing on predisposition to strike. This lamb has a tail docked to the correct length, a lifetime job. This lamb has had its tail cut too short. It is predisposed to strike for life. The tail of this lamb has been left too long. Not only will it collect dags, but it will be difficult to shear. Different types of fly strike are recognized according to the area of the body involved. Head strike occurs in rams when the wool and the skin at the base of the horn is struck. Some degree of protection against head strike is obtained by jetting. Fizzle strike is not uncommon. It often spreads to involve the sides of the animal. Fizzle strike can be controlled by ringing or jetting. Body strike occurs mostly on the back, withers or sides of an animal.
In young sheep, it usually starts on the withers or other points along the back, shoulder... Body strike occurs after prolonged wet weather and is frequently associated with fleece rot or mycotic dermatitis. 90% of all blowfly strike in sheep occurs in the region of the crutch or tail. Such strikes are known as breech strikes. Ewes are more liable to breech strike than weathers because of the wetting of the breech area with urine. The degree of wrinkliness of the skin of the breech in the merino varies considerably. The more wrinkly the breech, the more likely it is that moisture will be retained there. This is a plain breech sheep. This is a very wrinkly breached sheep. It is predisposed to strike, as wrinkles are ideal for the retention of moisture, especially when the wool grows long. Early detection of a struck area saves a lot of damage and helps to keep the green blowfly population in check. Struck sheep are treated by first removing the wool over and around the struck area. Care being taken to follow up all pockets of maggots, as these soon develop into a more extensive strike if missed. Wool should be clipped from an area of one to two inches around the strike. The dressing applied over the whole of the clipped area and well rubbed in to make sure that it penetrates down to the skin. Avoid dressing such as tar or other substances that will not subsequently scour out of the wool. Also avoid dressings that are irritant as they delay healing. The longer a strike wound remains unhealed, the more likely it is to be re-struck. With a mild dressing, the skin remains soft and pliable and heals within a few days. Whereas with an irritant dressing, it remains inflamed and thickened for a long time. With severe dressings, the skin may die. After treatment of the sheep, discarded maggots should be destroyed, wherever practicable, so as to assist in reducing the green blowfly population. Remember, the maggots of the green blowfly cause most of the damage in fly strike. Struck sheep can be treated by jetting, but great care is required as there is a risk of badly struck sheep being poisoned by the absorption of certain jetting mixtures. Jetting, however, is more often used as a prevention. It has certain advantages, but success depends on careful attention to detail. Wool, in all cases, must be properly saturated. Jetting programs need careful arranging for each individual property, so as to coordinate shearing, crutching, ringing and jetting at the necessary intervals. Prevention of blowfly strike starts at marking time and care should be taken with every lamb to see that the tail is correctly docked. It should be severed just below the level of the tip of the vulva and the skin on the undersurface left long so as to reflect back over the stump. Smooth skin over its end helps to keep a tail dag-free. Dry wool is not struck, and on this fact most present methods of prevention of breech strike are based. They aim to dry out the area and free it from stains. 
The most common methods of doing this are by shearing or crutching. Crutching must be well done to be really effective. This sheep has been well crutched. Whereas this one has been badly done and is still predisposed to breech strike. Shearing or crutching and ringing are only temporary measures at the best. For as the wool grows, their effectiveness fades. They should, however, be so coordinated as to ensure that the wool in the region of the breech and pizzle is always short when spring and summer rains, followed by sunny days, bring conditions so favorable for blowfly waves. Shearing or crutching protects both plain and wrinkly sheep. But because wrinkly sheep are very much more predisposed to strike, the importance of the protection given is greater for wrinkled types. This led to an attempt to control fly strike by classifying sheep according to wrinkliness and the keeping of only plain breached animals. However, studies of the inheritance of wrinkliness have shown that while either the very plain or the very wrinkled types could be maintained, the very nature of the inheritance makes it extremely difficult to hold intermediate types. Artificial de-wrinkling of the breech of sheep is now practiced and stretching of the bare skin around the vulva results. Sheep may thus be made plain breached by surgical means. Mule's operation, as developed by the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, has given excellent results in the prevention of blowfly strike in the breech area. The operation requires skill, but it can be performed quickly once an operator has become proficient. The results in many cases have been astounding. On one property, only 120 strikes were recorded in 10,000 young mule views from shearing to shearing. They were crutched once. On the same property, 8,000 old untreated ewes showed 10,800 strikes over the same period, despite a double crutching. Mulesing should be fitted into station routine by keeping young sheep handy after shearing or crutching and allowing a few days each year for the work. The ideal age for treating sheep is between 5 and 10 months. Young sheep are lighter to lift and handle. They heal rapidly and once healed are protected for life against crutch strikes. Properly organized, mulesing should not take longer than three or four days each year, even on big properties. Much more time than this would be normally spent on fly control, where sheep are not mules, A good deal of success in mulesing is dependent on the sheep being held in the correct position. The use of cradles greatly facilitates this. Sheep can also be restrained. The most suitable time to undertake mulesing is immediately after the first frost, because blowflies are not then active. Sheep can be done also in midsummer, provided that the small bush fly is not too prevalent. If there is any length of wool on the breech area, it is essential to crutch before mulesing. 
Mill's operation gives a remarkable degree of protection against breech strike, but it should be carried out properly to avoid mistakes, such as cutting into the bare area, as was done in this case, or commencing the cut too low down and leaving too much skin between them. Very wrinkly sheep require more skin removed than do plain ones. The piece of skin on the right was removed from a fairly plain sheep, while that on the left is from a wrinkly one. Irrespective of the degree of wrinkliness in a sheep, a definite pattern must be followed when mulesing. The operation will now be performed slowly. The shears are held with the back of the hand to the sheep and the thumb on the blade to prevent lapping. Using the thumb and forefinger of the left hand, the skin is picked up at a point about one inch below and to the side of the tail. No tension is placed on the skin at this time. The shears are pressed firmly onto the body of the sheep with the blades open to their full extent. As soon as the cut is started, the maximum tension is put onto the skin with the left hand. As the cut comes up over the pin bone, the right hand is raised to keep the shears flat on the skin. At this stage, the shears will be pointing to the hock of the opposite leg, and the cut is brought along to the level of the bare area. The cut must have a good width at this point. After passing the level of the bare area, the cut is turned up the inside of the crutch and finished off. The operation is completed by removing a corresponding piece of skin from the other leg. There should be about one inch of skin between the cuts. There is no need to apply any dressing at the time of operation and after care of treated sheep is simple. They are merely turned out to pasture and left undisturbed for one week. The sheep may not be a pretty picture immediately after it's done, but healing is rapid. This sheep has been done only 10 days. After three weeks, the cuts are almost healed and the bare area has commenced to stretch. This treated animal carries the hallmark of all mules' sheep a plain breech and a stretched bare area. The stretching of the bare area can be well seen in this sheep, particularly when comparison is made with this untreated sheep. Mule sheep are actually less susceptible to strike than naturally plain breeched ones, as shown by this large scale trial over a period of 12 months. Breach strike can be controlled by a combination of correct tail docking and mulesing. Sheep so treated are easy to shear and easier to crutch. Wool growers thus have a practical answer to the blow fly menace.